The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. You're listening to Wrestling to the Max. Alert, alert, clear all channels. This is an exclusive. How you like that? Sean Garmer, and Paul Leeser. King of Spot. New Japan Pro Wrestling. Hello and welcome to this Rest of the Max Extra. We're looking at the New Japan G1 Climax 27 nights 4 through 5 as they're getting ready to start night 6 here in a few hours. Uh, Sorry we're so late, but we've had, uh, as you probably heard on our other shows, uh, if you haven't, uh, Gary had a loss of power on Sunday night, which kind of put everything behind the 8-ball we probably would have done this uh, during the day on Monday to get it out there before uh, show number uh, six. But, hey, it is what it is, Paul. It is what it is, and we're here to talk about it now. And, and I'm really excited because these were two spectacular nights of action for sure. Yeah, you had some, of course, uh, Block B taking up that last show in Kirk and Hall. And Mm -hmm. then you had the first sort of, we're getting out of the places where we usually have the the commentary and all that. And it's starting to get into the smaller shows. They go into Makita for uh, night five, and they do not uh, disappoint at all. Uh, What a fantastic show that was. But before then, uh, we get into this uh, night four. And I, I, we have to start with the depressing uh, news uh, that huh. happened in the tag match. Before you start the G1 matches, it was Bullet Club versus LIJ and Bad Luck Fale tore poor Daryl to shreds. I... um. Sean, I, I don't, I don't mind telling you, I've never been this heartbroken watching a wrestling match before. Um, poor, poor Daryl was just sitting there with Milano watching the match, and suddenly Naito's on the table, and, and he's in Belfale's hands, and before you know it, he's, he's just in pieces. Uh, his head gets torn off. He, he's this stuffing is there. It, it's one of the greatest crimes against humanity I think I've ever witnessed, and. Uh, Boy, Twitter was not a fan. Uh, <laughs> no. no, the People crowd were... was not a fan either. They were booing loudly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and there's there's petitions going around online for New Japan to charge Fale with charges of murder for poor Daryl. And uh, I don't mind telling you I've signed a couple of them. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I haven't gone around signing any yet, but, man, I was tempted. I, it just... It look, a way a great way to make Fale hated. Uh, oh my for god! For one, <laughs> but uh, it's awful, and you know, Hiromu now that that was what he was using to cope mm-hmm. after losing the title, and and now he has nothing, and he he hasn't been talking at all uh, since losing Daryl. Poor man. Just uh, it's, oh, I I I. The, the sorrow on his face whenever he goes back into the ring after the match and Naito wants to do the whole fist pump thing that you do when you're in LIJ and Hiromu's face is just, it makes you want to cry. 
he's just so sad. He's so heartbroken. He doesn't know what he's going to do. And he ends up walking off with just the pieces in his arms, like sort of cradling it. It's, it might be the saddest thing. I, I don't know how many times I say I, I was much like Larry wrote on his review. I don't know if I could make it through the G1 after that. Like I was, I was depressed. <laughs> It was a, a very sad moment for all of us. And, you know, Daryl had just become uh, a thing mm-hmm. for for everyone here, for, for, for viewers, for Hiromu, uh, for LIJ. And, you know, he was wearing his hair and he was he was letting it all hang out there. And then freaking mm-hmm. Fall A had to come and just destroy him. So awful. Uh yeah, I, that awful, awful man. Just a murdering piece of shit. That's what he is. Yes, <laughs> he, he is that that awful folly. So uh, we are going to talk about the actual wrestling on the show. We just had to mention that uh, that mm-hmm. bit of sad news. Uh, I also don't mind stuff. telling people listening that uh, this is probably the best night of undercard tags uh, so far in, in the tournament. All of them absolutely deliver. Uh, especially, I, I, Kitamura and Tanahashi against Nagata and Oka was just fire. That was incredible. Awesome. I now have to go uh, back and watch um, some tags. But mm-hmm. let's start off with, hey, they got it out of the way first. The Yano portion of Block B. Tor Yano against Satoshi Kojima. And, well, this one almost ran 10 minutes again. Uh, I, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it, Sean. Like they're, they're still doing the usual Yano stuff. They're just stretching it now. And, and I, I, some ways I understand it because you can't have Yano just doing the three, four minute specials every night, but come on now. I, I, nine minutes seems long to me too. I was thinking six or seven probably is plenty of time if you don't want to shorten it. And I mean, he does get the win here. You did, so, I mean, there is that. Yeah, I, I think this is a total expected win after losing to Okada. You know he was going to come back and get a win over a veteran like Kojima who tried his best uh, to avoid the the moments. But as Yano does, he's able to <laughs> have a one-up on you and, and get that roll-up. Finds a way to win all the time. So, I mean, hats off to Yano, I guess. I just, nine minutes is still too long. <laughs> <laughs> well, a, a match that gets just a little bit under 12 minutes is the next one here. Evil and Juice Robinson. Uh, man, uh, Juice got a lot in this here. Um, they had a, a good sort of back and forth. Evil was, of course being the heel, using chin lock and everything, and then Juice kind of fired back up. Evil got a big fisherman buster, and then uh, Juice pulls a big power bomb out of nowhere, which was uh, fantastic to see. Uh, they had a really cool counter of counter and recounter and uncounter of the. That's what makes the. Uh, a lot of people know it as the kill switch, the pulp friction here for. Mm-hmm for Juice as they just keep unfolding and folding the arms back and moving it around, twisting them around and that half Nelson that uh, Evil does to get out of it it was uh, fantastic. And then uh, he hits the STO finally, the Evil, and Evil picks up his first two points. I I really like this match a lot. Juice continues to bring the energy to all of his matches, and I think everybody's just trying to keep up with him when it comes to that. Evil, however, has a game plan here. He works the neck early, trying to set up for his new submission, the Banshee Muzzle. Uh, It never really comes to that because Evil, uh, or excuse me, Juice just keeps finding ways to keep fighting and fighting, and Evil eventually... Uh, has to damn near kill him with a tiger suplex, and then uh, a lariat and all that neck work finally becomes too much after an STO to finally keep Juice down. I, I really enjoyed this match. I thought this was awesome. Yeah, this was a really good match. Uh, you know, but you know, it's uh, I I've seen it anywhere in the three and a half to the four 
Uh, mm-hmm. So it kind of depends on you, but I think it's sort of on that border of almost a uh, great match, but still really good stuff again from both guys. Uh, they had two guys that kind of work well off each other of juice providing that energy and evil just kind of, you know, doing what he had to do to get the win and being a little, mm-hmm. just a little bit smarter. Uh, so it, two points there for, for evil and, we move on now for for guys that, you know, Sonata, oh, but he has two points. Minoru Suzuki is looking for two points. And, uh, of course, we have to have a Suzuki gun sighting because why not? Naturally. Right? Uh, yeah. Naturally, it, it's going to happen. Uh, I thought they did a nice job of kind of not having it be that big a deal in this match which I appreciated, mm-hmm. you know, Desperado uh, does get involved with Sonata, kind of uh, just t- basically toss them aside, but it does allow Suzuki to, to get an upper hand. Uh, you, know, Suzu- you know, Sonata had to get woken up by Suzuki just freaking slapping him. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, after that, it kind of was a little bit different, but uh, Suzuki just kind of had a counter for everything Sonata tried to do. Uh, after a while, he did get the skull end in there, but you know Suzuki again just is able to. It this I love this match just from that perspective of just the veteran being able to counter the younger guy, knowing what he's going to do and changing it to his benefit, hitting that guts pile driver at the end and getting the win. Mm-hmm. Good. Stuff. I. Uh... Yeah, good stuff indeed. I, I enjoyed this, maybe a little less than the last match, but this this told a definite story. I think Sonata, all, everybody, including myself, is really watching him in this tournament, and uh, he kind of comes in a little bit off his game, and then the game he finds is the one Suzuki's playing, and he keeps trying to work a ground game against him, and naturally that's just that's not going to work against Minoru Suzuki, who is just king at that sort of stuff. And like Sean said, he's got he's got reversals and ways to slip out of everything Sonata is trying to do, and even though Suzuki is on the older side, he still looks so smooth doing it. It's incredible, and um, you know, a, a gotch pile driver driver later, and and Suzuki's looking at at two points, and maybe not one of his best matches of the tournament, but still still very good. Yeah, I mean, and Sonata, you know, that's the thing. Like he was he was trying to prove he could get Suzuki down and mm-hmm. like you said he's he's playing too much into what Suzuki wants to do he wants it to stay on the ground if, if Sonata had actually kept it in the air and been very aerial and 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 tried to be you know kill him with speed might have mm-hmm. been a different deal right but uh, Suzuki very manipulative uh, just like the way that he's He's able to uh, get, you know, his members to get involved in his matches. Very, he lures you in uh, to his right. style. Oh, yeah, it, it's almost like he was baiting him the entire way, and mm-hmm. then, you know, he finally hits Skull's End, and and that's obviously not something that Suzuki is going to lay around in because he knows how to get out of it easily every time, and he just it was almost like child's play for him messing around with Sonata. It was it was something to see. Well, another thing that you definitely want to watch is Kenny Omega and Tamatanga going at it. Another mm-hmm. clash of stablemates happening here. As uh, I think uh, I remember Paul discussing on the previous show on the tag, Tamatanga taking that tag match very seriously, and he does so in this match as well. As uh, Owens and Fale are out here with Tamatanga, Yujiro comes out with Omega Man. Uh, you know, if I was Omega, you're the leader. Hello, let's, let's reorder this <laughs> this here. Uh, but uh, Tonga just from the start uh, just rips the elite shirt, and uh, then you know Tonga even gets on the microphone or not on the microphone, but he yells at Omega like, "Hey, if uh, you know." You're Bullet Club, be the Bullet Club. If you want to be the leader, come out here and prove it. You know, basically just really getting Omega at, at like, hello, 
if you mm-hmm. want to really be the leader of this thing, you better be out here, you know, putting me down, basically, because I'm not going to just lay down for you. You're going to have to really win this one. And that's right. sort of what has to happen here. Omega really just has to pull out every stop he possibly can, uh, hitting V-triggers and has to put him away with the one wing angel uh, to to get uh, Tonga down. But a really good match here and love to see Tonga being aggressive. This was a, a fantastic match. And I, I, I loved seeing uh, a lot of the places that I follow, at least on, on Facebook and Twitter, this this got Tama a lot of love, uh, which I greatly appreciated seeing. They worked a great match. He does, Tama even cuts a mid-match promo, telling him, you know, I mean, if, you know, F the elite, F all these sub things. If you're in the Bullet Club, just be in the Bullet Club. Don't worry about everything else. And he's more worried about Kenny Omega being in this for himself instead of for the Bullet Club and all that. And if you're watching this on English commentary, they really play this up, I think, to a, a fantastic effect, especially since Don Callis is technically in in the bullet club's corner no matter what especially kenny omegas so watching them play off of all that was was really cool to see and maybe one of the few times where i would say english commentary was super helpful to to everything going on here in new japan but absolutely tonga doesn't go away he keeps making kenny having to to keep bringing it and keep bringing it and eventually v triggers and and one wig and angel later and it, it's just too much and um, you know, they, they handshake and are too sweet, excuse me, at the end. And, um, you know, it, everything seems to be settled for now. Uh, but I would not be surprised to see these problems keep coming up. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it may mm-hmm. be uh, a thing for them in the the future. Or maybe they kind of patch it up. But uh, either way, uh, you know, Tonga has made it known that he's mm-hmm. watching this out for Omega so it will be interesting in the in the tags and and if you know if Omega comes out with another elite shirt for his matches if Tonga's out there saying something about it you know so mm-hmm. another little nugget of story dropped in here which always appreciated uh in the absolutely ones. even though you won't have another bullet club clash or anything like that still going to be an interesting thing to see throughout this to see what 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 it means but uh let's hurry on and get to this main event kazushka okada against michael elgin perhaps uh the stunner of the tournament now uh you know naito and ibushi might have just been surpassed because this was absolutely insane uh how how great this was uh i mean Lord, uh, you know, we talk about how Okada has been on this run and the guys have been taking him to the limit constantly. And, you know, Yano start. I mean, Yano went 10 minutes. Normally we don't see that. Okada put him away. You know, it's just a big deal. But here comes Michael Elgin, a guy that sort of had this, you know, middle of the road New Japan year. And... Here he comes, and he made Okada have to work for this, and it was amazing. It was absolutely mm-hmm. just awesome. Uh, oh, May, uh, Elgin countering everything pretty much that uh, Okada. I mean, obviously it would make Okada get angry, and then he'd hit it. But he, uh, he again, it's it's about making Okada work for it. So everything that Okada would normally just get off, like, no big deal, like that running crossbody into the crowd. Well, guess what? Elgin catches him, you know, which we don't see people really do. So, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, fantastic work there. Him countering, you know, tombstones and uh, rainmakers with a freaking enziguri to the head. And uh, it's just fantastic stuff that makes Elgin look great. Of course, Okada, again, gets a big win, putting a guy away. But, oh, this was just so, so freaking good. This this was absolutely incredible, and I think played up pretty well in the pre-match stuff, too, because Elgin comes out, uh, all business, looks like he's not effing around. Out comes Okada, who's all sorts of energy, shakes the rails and everything, mm-hmm. like, seemingly had too much coffee. 
<laughs> like the Ultimate Warrior inhabited him yeah. for like <laughs> yes. a minute. For like five seconds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and they get in the ring, and Elgin is just – he. Okada wants to play games. Elgin's not here for games. He's here to beat the crap out of him. And beat the crap out of him, he does. The crowd was absolutely insane for this match. I think that's what really helped elevate yeah, this. Yeah, they, they were too. stomping that by the end. Oh. Yeah. And, that's and when you know it's it, great, when they're stomping, and you can't hear mm-hmm. anything, but they're insane. Yeah, yeah. It just the, the low rumble and the crowds ch- screaming names and everything. Like, this phenomenal atmosphere. There was and a little everybody... kid, like, yelling at the top of his lungs for Okada. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There, uh, I, I mean, I think everybody alive might have bid on Elgin killing Okada with the Rainmaker, hitting him with another Lariat, and then the Elgin bomb. I, I, I almost came out of my seat because I thought Elgin was about to pull off the upset of the year. And uh, I think from that second on, you really knew Elgin didn't have a shot in heck of winning it. But they didn't really let you give you a moment to think about it all that much, uh, just because they kept pouring on the action. And uh, I think by the end. I, I put this up at four and three quarters like I did with Ibushi and Naito. I wouldn't shame anybody if they gave this one five stars. So this is awesome, awesome match. Yeah, this was so freaking great. I mean, just really just watch this. Just go watch mm-hmm. it. It is 25 minutes well spent uh, oh. because you will – I if you don't get any emotion out of this, I don't know what to tell you because it's, it's amazing and uh, just – so much into this, and again, it plays into that story of, you know, Okada has has more guys he's got to face here. Uh, two of them, obviously, he's already faced. So, you know, there's a little bit of luck on his side there, or perhaps maybe not. Uh, but, you know, and then it, I guess it also plays sort of in like uh, what happened to Hiromu, where both of those guys beat him. Uh, you know, what what happens there? Uh, do they get title shots? Do they not? Uh, since he already beat them previously, but it, it's still it's it's how many of these guys are going to take you to the limit? Could we see a Tomatonga like put up this this kind of fight with him? Could uh, mm-hmm. we see you know Juice take him to the limit like that? I mean, just it's uh, you know you know Sonata could could certainly do it. I mean, so yeah. This is going to be a fun ride with Okada. Is there going to be a guy that he falls to? Uh, you know, hopefully a new challenger. But you know, if it's one of the old challengers, it is what it is. But still, just you know, both guys having to work. Omega had to work for it in, in, in this show, and and Okada had to work for it too. So, mm-hmm. good story for both those guys there as well. I think that's the entire story that Block B is based around, right? Watching these parallels between Okada and Omega going all the way up to their last match uh, on the second to last night of the tournament before you get to the finals. These guys are going to face off. And, I mean, right now they're both sitting atop the block undefeated with four points. Everybody else at two except for Elgin and Kojima who got nothing. And uh, this is... uh, this was one of the best nights of the tournament so far. I'd say I put it right up there with night one for sure, undercard included. And uh, boy, I just what a match, what a show, you know? Yeah, definitely worth watching. Uh, pretty much all the show, none of the matches are. I mean, you can skip the Yano thing if you want, but the other four are well worth watching. You're talking about three and a half to, uh, you know to four, you know, somewhere in that range for the other, mm-hmm. the, 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 the top, the other three, and then you got your, your elite main event there. So again, definitely should check out night, night four, uh, second out of the B block. And this is how your standings are going to look going into the show that starts in about an hour and a half as I'm talking It's Okada and Omega with four points, and then you got a bunch of people on two points. Uh, You know, Evil, Juice, Tamatanga, Suzuki, Sonata, and Yano, and then you got Elgin and Kojima at zero. So, Mm -hmm. interesting times for Michael Elgin. See if he can make a run, or if it's just not his G1. But Okada and Omega, again, with, like you said, those parallels happening right now. 
Yeah, right there in front of your eyes. Looking forward to watching what happens. Well, not to be outdone, because this is kind of how it's been. Block A Mm -hmm. has been setting the tone. uh, And they attempt to do this here again uh, with with Block uh, A. I, I did not watch any of the tags here, so... Anything I know? Uh, yeah, uh, so during Juice, Finley, and Kawado taking on uh, Suzuki Gun, essentially, uh, Minoru targets Juice's injured leg and really goes to work on it, um, so much so that Juice has to be helped out. So I'd look forward to that uh, on their next meet, on their meeting tonight. And uh, that's really I, probably about the big one. The, the tag matches are fine. There's nothing like super special. I'd say go out of your way to watch, but... That, that note about Suzuki going to work on Juice's leg could certainly matter. And that match is actually pretty good, too, especially watching Hirai. Uh, get young boyed by Suzuki is always fun. <laughs> <laughs> so we start off with Zack Sabre Jr. and Yoshihashi uh, in this block. And Sabre pretty much controls uh, for a lot of it. Until uh, Yoshiyashi's able to make the comeback. Desperado's out here, so he takes him out. Uh, And then, you know, Yoshihashi basically is just trying to avoid being put into submission by Mm -hmm. Zack Sabre Jr. Well, the problem is he's not able to avoid it in the end. And a little bit before 12 minutes, Yoshihashi taps out. Sabre wins. And, you know, I thought this was a good match to to start things off. I thought this was really solid. I thought this was here to really put over the fact that Zack Sabre Jr. is super dangerous. Yoshihashi doesn't want to give up and trying to find that babyface fire. It's just, it's not there tonight. Sabre is intent on making him into some sort of human sculpture that's not really human looking and... um, Locking in the double arms and really holding back, really wrenching back on him, actually, finally makes Yoshi tap. So, a, a good effort from Yoshi here, but, I mean, Zack Sabre is not to be denied here. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy that you, might, you could have thought maybe, you know, Yoshihashi would get the win. It's a guy they've been pushing. Um, mm-hmm. You know, where is he at on the pecking order? But, you know, Sabre goes through that challenge. So, mm-hmm. That's a, that's a positive for him, and Yoshiashi now staring at a loss. And so then uh, starts a a good, I mean, you have one in the middle there that, that kind of puts things back down, but you have uh, a clash of veterans, guys that have, uh, a guy, uh, two guys that have met each other many times before, uh, have mm-hmm. a lot of history that's maybe not concurrent to what's happening now, but a lot of history. Uh, with the company and everything else. Hiroshi Tanahashi, your Intercontinental Champion against Yuji Nagata. I think even th- this is one of those times where even though you feel like and you know, okay, Tanahashi is winning here. There's no mm-hmm. way they're going to have Yuji Nagata win, even though what a story for him would it be to have one more shot at the uh, IC title after, you know, we saw, we remember him failing against Nakamura all those years ago. But mm-hmm. he, uh, it, they do a great job of making you feel like, damn, Nagata has a shot here. Mm-hmm. And uh, nothing says it more than him going all the way to the top for a super exploder huh. that I don't think we've seen in a long, long time. Uh, so that, that was freaking great. And, uh, I was amazed that, uh, Tanahashi kicked out. I think they got me a little bit with that one. And, uh, you know, he was able to get the back to tower, but during this match, also Tanahashi's working on the leg. He's, mm-hmm. he's doing the dragon screw and, uh, making sure to keep kind of the, the older man down. And, you know, Tanahashi's smart. He knows, he knows what he's doing here. So, uh, eventually, Tanahashi does win, gets that high fly flow in about 15 minutes. Uh, you know, the guy even gets busted open because they're brawling and and doing all this. Just I, I thought uh, Larry might have underrated this a little bit. Like I thought this was mm-hmm. a freaking great match. Just so much 
in here for Nagata just uh it didn't take you know Nagata was was up on this one he was not uh having yeah. to be woken up and all that he, he was ready to go and that crowd was was absolutely loving him too yeah this crowd ate up Nagata from the second he walked through that curtain to the second he walked back and uh j- this is just a phenom- another phenomenal f- performance from from Nagata with, with obviously he's working with great talent too but I more than holding his own and showing you what he can still do and I I honestly I would have been okay if Tanahashi lost here I just, I really would have but uh it's just not meant to be during this unfortunately I mean the crowd even goes so far as to boo Tanahashi at times and he plays it up he plays it up he knows what he's doing in there like you said and um you know I I love Nagata so much. I think he's been one of the guys to really watch during this tournament just to see what he's going to do every time. And he's, he, I don't think he's had anything below three and a half so far. I, I'm with you. I think Larry underrated this. I think it's another three and three quarters effort from Nagata and Tanahashi here. But, uh, geez, what a, what a match. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think you should, you know, maybe if you haven't watched New Japan a lot, like, again, I'm sure there's a lot of people that, you know, love those. USA shows are going on. Let me watch this. There's a lot of, you know, hubbub going around about this G1. What is this? All that. Uh, Definitely, you still need to watch this terrific uh, match happening. The story you can you can see. Obviously, the the history that you won't get from not knowing all that. Mm -hmm. Maybe gets lost on you a little bit, but just uh, it's just it's so great to to like get to see Nagata go out there and the fans really responding to him. And even though he's losing, he never looks bad in these efforts. Um, mm-hmm. I think, you know, just like Liger, I think he will be able to hold up until the end. And we're, we're going to be seeing him do this a lot. And uh, it, it, it really helped that, you know, the crowd was behind him. Tanahashi was up to it. He changed his style to work, you know, what it, what needed to. And mm-hmm. we knew what was going to happen, but damn, they did a great job of, of making it think Nagata would, might win. Mm-hmm. Absolutely agree with you on all those points. And uh, then, well, you'd think maybe Naito would go out there and really get one for his pal, Horomu, after Daryl was sadly dismembered. Savagely and, dismembered. Yes. But, uh, you know, breaking all of our hearts in one huh. was a uh, uh yesterday morning. So, really, what ends up happening is Fale says, you know what, I'm not even going to let you get it, anything in here. I'm just going to get you before you... I don't want to sit here and wait for your stupid entrance, Naito. I'm just going to go after you. And after that, he just he just goes out to the problem is the crowd really didn't care about all his, his offense. And, uh, you know, I, I thought, you know, Naito tried um, here. Uh, he he got him in the clutch. That, that wasn't enough for a big guy like that. Um, but really, this was this was almost like fall A just taking him out. I mean, this mm-hmm. wasn't even, you know, Fale knows Naito's one of the front winners. He's just like, I'm not letting you go around and, and trick me or whatever. Just not having none of that shit today. Exactly. Exactly. And I think this was fine. You maybe could have been a little better shaving off a, a minute or two here or there. But I think what you get here is ultimately just it, it's fine, right? Fale is is here to to keep being the monster that he is. I just think Naito needs to figure out that formula that Okada and Tanahashi have with him so far, and, and maybe it's just the way he's performing some of the hope spots that he gets against the big man, but I don't know. Something here just didn't click, and that's uh, that's a little unfortunate, but that kind of happens with Fale from time to time. So I wager if this becomes something of a feud going down the line, uh, they could probably pull out something better. Yeah, I, I just... I don't know. I think it's just from the the moment of not letting Naito pretty much just, you know, for a lack of a better term, just he didn't let him breathe, really. You know, mm-hmm. so it's just there. there's not a lot of 
ability for Naito to kind of come back and and get that back and forth with with him. It's when Fale is in monster mode, you know, unless you're a Fale fan, which you know none of, none of that crowd is. Uh, there's there's not gonna be a lot of care for that match. I don't think anybody uh, in the world is after what happened to Daryl. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> unless you just don't like cats, I guess. So you know. I've seen uh, the few people uh, on Twitter who were happy that Daryl got, you know, executed essentially, which uh, I, I question their humanity. Yeah, like what's it to you if <laughs> what, you know if a stuffed animal was murdered right there? I mean, like, I mean, is it hurting you at all that it's that it's there? I mean, I guess are you still mad at because Jr. didn't know what it was? I mean, so you know. I feel like it might be going in that crowd. They're still upset that people are mad because Jr. didn't know what Daryl was. But uh, I love on 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 Japanese commentary. They went crazy because he got <laughs> that happened. So it was uh, uh, sad, sad moments. But hey, you know what? They cheered us up immediately with this Tomohiro Ishii and Kota Ibushi match. Oh my God, these men, you know. Come on, Ishii is just the master at this point of knowing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I walk in breathing four stars, so how do you not? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> so, like, Kota Ibushi, you're going to have to just stink the joint up for this not to be great. And obviously, Ibushi did not. Uh, the just basically... Again, Ishii doing his, you know, I am tougher than you. And Ibushi's mm-hmm. like, all right, you are? Well, come take these kicks. Come take everything I got because uh, you're going you're gonna to keep getting them, dude. And eventually just uh, – I was surprised at this one a little bit just because I kind of had Ishii going further. But I'm glad for Ibushi to – to get a win against uh, a big guy like this. So, you know, mm-hmm. it, wonderful close to this match, and Ibushi hits that freaking uh, last ride after just kicking the crap out of uh, Ishii right in the face. So mm-hmm. just just wonderful match that you need to go watch. Yes. This is a phenomenal part of storytelling on New Japan's part, too, because it seems like what they're doing with Ibushi right now is proving that he can hang with the different the different aspects of all the main roster guy, or all the, you know, the big guys here in, in the block. And he went hold for hold, essentially, with Zack Sabre Jr. That only ended with him being stronger than he is, essentially. And in this one, he he essentially glows strike for strike with Ishii, which is just... A freaking miracle that he's still alive, honestly, because Ishii was not playing around with him at all in this. And in fact, disrespecting him during it, too, trying to make sure that he came up and and showed that he belonged. He spit in his face. Uh, I mean, he's pie facing him and just sort of like pushing on him with his foot from time to time. And I this was just I thought it was great storytelling. It's great wrestling. And uh, I mean, if it's physically possible for Ishii to have a match less than four stars, I don't. I show me where that happened this year because I, I don't think it has <laughs> single yeah, wise, I, at least. Ishii just uh, I, also the I, I love that Pele with and then Ishii just comes and says, uh, "Not today, man. Not mm-hmm. today." You, I don't know how. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I have this. I don't know how Ibushi was standing after that. That was <laughs> nasty, uh, but. Uh, you know, Ibushi prevailed, but man, definitely need to go watch this match. It is uh, again, another one that is well worth your time in that four and a half uh, star range. Just so much great stuff happening there. And it, you just like uh, two guys just whooping each other is happening there. That's, yeah, that's what this match was uh so much i mean ibushi even hits his little quick strike thing that i'm sure people are familiar with now and ishii kicks out at one he he ain't playing games yeah <laughs> ishii's like yep that that's not that's not enough for me man you have to do more quick uh, strikes don't matter to this face <laughs> no <laughs> he is the stone pitbull you know it's so. true man 
Literally made of concrete at this point. I think I was right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, they need to perform a study on Ishii, and you know, uh, yeah, t- takes a, take some of that that skin and see what it's made out of, and uh, you know, on uh, Game of Thrones, they have those stone men. Ishii would fit mm-hmm. right in. You know. I, I mean, they couldn't infect him with the disease because you know he is. The yeah. cure, I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's know. he's already got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, Hiroki Goto and Togi Makabe was your main event uh, for this show, and you're thinking, man, they just had that great match. Here comes Makabe. Uh, you know, how's how are they going to work out in this? And they went on and had a very good match themselves. I mean, uh, Goto and Makabe. Obviously, it helps when you get to just do the the two guys bruising here but mm-hmm. I, I felt like he got more of Makabe sort of doing a little bit different things than just trading lariats and stuff you got some of that but he he seemed more motivated here um mm-hmm. Makabe gets his first two points after uh getting the big uh spider german and the knee drop with uh with Goto basically almost standing too yeah yeah it's really Really impressive. Uh, I thought this was pretty good for what it was, right? I mean, it's Togi. I, I don't know if he should really be working seventeen minute matches anymore, but I think they what they did here was really, really good. Uh, it's a great brawl. It's exactly what you expect from these two, right? They're they're beating the crap out of each other. They're throwing each other around. Lots of lots of lariats. Lots of big kicks, uh, headbutts, all that fun stuff, you know. So. I, I thought this was a quality main event. I, you know, obviously wasn't better than the co-main event, but this was this was really good. Goto knows what he's doing. It's G one time. You're gonna you're gonna come out here. You got Goto. You're gonna have a good match. Yeah, I mean, he brings it in these G ones, mm-hmm. and and certainly, and then you know, then you you wonder, you go, well, why is he there at the end? Well, I mean, you can you can't say he didn't deserve it uh, from his work. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he goes out there and delivers pretty much every time, doesn't matter who it's against. And you know, Makabe was up to the challenge this time. Great to see that as well. You hate to just you know, because Makabe could easily just say I'm not interested and and uh, move along, right? And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he he was up to the task, and he had a really good main event. And of course, it helps when you have that match before it. That's like. All right, we got to do something here. So, right. Uh, but uh, wonderful block uh, B on night five, and you have a three-way tie now for the top of the block with uh, it's uh, what is it? More than a three-way it's, here. Or, I like sorry, six. I'm not looking at. Uh, I'm looking at the wrong. <laughs> uh, deal here. So you get Fale, Naito, Goto, Ibushi, Saber, and Tanahashi all at four points. Uh, you know, this is a very evenly matched block. We kind of talked about that where you got a lot of guys that you go, oh, who's going to lose um, mm-hmm. here? And right now it's Ishii, Yoshihashi, and Makwe with two points, and Yuji Nagata sitting there with zero. And we kind of uh, could see that coming there, but. Going to be an interesting next few days for this block uh, as well to see how these uh, points stack up. Uh, speaking of that, after now that this show's over, they took their break today. They go on a, a three-day st- uh, string and then take another break on uh, Friday. So you have uh, block... B in Fukushima, the big pallet arena there. Uh, that's uh, all. These shows are at 5:30 Eastern Time live. By the way, if you're one of those that likes to get up early and, and watch these things, and not there, they're on demand there for you. Uh, on the 26th on Wednesday, it's they're in the Sendai Sun Plaza Hall in Miyagi. Uh, for Block A, and then it ends with Block B in Niigata. On a Thursday, they'll take their little break and they'll start again uh, on Saturday. So, uh, 
some interesting string of shows here, and we'll get mm-hmm. two block Bs and a block A. In that yeah, stretch. It, it's Okada and Sonata in the main event tonight, Fukushima. That Sendai show is main evented by Tanahashi and Goto, but that's also one of my favorite venues uh, in Japan. Just to, It's so different looking, and I really like it. Um, and then, I haven't looked at the Thursday show yet, but the next two days should be great for sure. And um, I really enjoyed most of the tags. If you haven't been watching the undercards, most of them are usually worth their time. They're doing really well at setting up things, too. And I've been fortunate enough to be watching these live, uh, like I said, and then I'll fall asleep and finish it the next day, essentially. But I usually make it through the undercard, and thats I don't think I could have said that past couple of years. Yeah, certainly. Uh, I think when I was doing the the reviews a few years ago, and I'd stay up and watch them, it, the undercard was, I think, much more palatable that way. I think when you're trying mm-hmm. to watch on demand, and you go, man, I can re-, like for me when I'm trying to shave off an hour, it's a yeah, lot easier yeah. uh, that way uh, to just go straight to the G1 matches. But if you're one of those that you know, maybe it's your day off or something, and you go, all right, let me just watch this whole show. Uh, de- you know, like Paul says, definitely worth your time. And uh, hopefully you're enjoying our G1 coverage. If you have liked what you heard here, of course, you can always let us know uh, by, you know, many of the com- you know, either on WTNet.com, on Forumania.com, on YouTube. Hit those comment sections. Let us know if you're enjoying it. Uh, you can also hit the subscribe button. Of course, you know if you're only a New Japan fan, you might have to deal with uh, some of our other content, which is WWE focused or just has other wrestling in it. But hey, you know you might find something you like in there, and uh, hopefully you enjoy that as well. If you're one of those that likes all kinds of wrestling, uh, we just did a Raw review, Battleground review, and of course episode one for the week. Uh, so. Um, you got plenty of stuff to get into there. Uh, you know, I don't know if uh, you want to go through another battleground segment after after having to watch it, but if you do, hey, more power to you. Um, again, uh, appreciate you guys listening, and we will be back. Uh, I don't know we'll have to play this one by ear how we're doing this sometime uh, soon. <laughs> yeah, sometime soon, but. Yeah, oh, well, t- maybe, uh, maybe to, yeah, maybe tomorrow, since we gotta do, I gotta do SmackDown anyway, uh, but if you don't see it there on your Wednesday morning docket, uh, you'll know what happened, but for sure, mm-hmm. for sure, we will do something on Thursday, uh, yeah. you know, we might just do tomorrow and then do Wednesday and Thursday together as you know, may work out better that way. Uh, so you're not doing three in one sitting. But, uh, yeah. So be on the lookout for that. And see you later, everybody. Have a good one, guys. The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment.